Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Good morning and welcome to the virtual worship experience of the St. Paul, St. Elizabeth Faith Community in Meridian, Mississippi. Today is Sunday, July 26, 2020. And this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so grateful that you have uh, welcomed us into your home that we may join together in worshiping our Lord in spirit and in truth. My name is Eugene Boger, and I serve as the pastor of this wonderful faith community that's comprised of St. Paul United Methodist Church and St. Elizabeth United Methodist Church uh, here in Meridian, Mississippi. My prayer is that as you worship with your family and friends and loved ones, that something will take place in this experience that will uh, deepen your discipleship or compel you to a closer relationship with Jesus the Christ. I'm excited about this morning's worship experience as we conclude our sermon series uh, entitled Rooted. Uh, this Sunday's part three will focus on pruning and the process of removing the things that will make allowance for growth. Listen, I pray that you will be blessed. Also in this experience, we will have nuggets from Noah. Uh, that is the children's moment where the word of God is expressed through the eyes and the heart of a child. But Jesus said, for of such is the kingdom of God. So listen, my friends, go ahead and gather the rest of your family um, or position yourself in front of your devices and center yourselves as we prepare to worship the Lord together in community, albeit virtual, in spirit and in truth. Come on and let's worship together.
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Nuggets of Vanilla. This is the story of 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 through 12. It all started when Solomon had a pretty awesome dream. Solomon was the son of David. David was very faithful to the Lord. The Lord charged Solomon with a lot of responsibility. And so Solomon was very confused because he's never been a leader or charged with a lot of responsibility. So the Lord said, I'll grant you with whatever your heart desires. And so he said, Solomon said, I need you to guide me through life. I need you to help me distinguish good versus evil. Help me make good choices. And so the Lord was very pleased that he didn't ask for victory over his own enemies and he wasn't selfish. And so since the Lord was so pleased, he gave him more years of living and wisdom. And so in this, I learned that to always know that the Lord's watching over us and the Lord will provide you with whatever you need. My friends, hear these words of assurance as we prepare our hearts for prayer. Don't be frantic. God is working mighty things in your life, even right now. And you have been given the spirit of hope and courage. Remember that God is with you. So place your trust in God's absolute care. God of amazing surprises, it's very easy for us to focus on the big picture and forget that change comes in the smallest of ways in our hearts, our spirit, and in our actions. We gather in our own sacred space this morning, coming from different experiences to hear your word and to worship you in spirit and truth. We offer our prayers for our family and friends who are in need of your healing and forgiveness. Yet we withhold ourselves from you. We have a hard time imagining that you would find much of real worth in each of us. Forgive us for thinking that we are insignificant. Lord, pour your love on us. You have given us the seeds of compassion and hope. You've called us the treasure that is meant to enrich the world. Lord, help us to be those people who are so confident in your presence that we dare to step out on faith, to work for you in places of need and strife, to witness to your love in all that we do. Lord, give us guidance. Give us your forgiveness and the courage to be at work in your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. This is our prayer in the precious name of Jesus, who is our healer, our redeemer, and our savior. In his name we pray. Amen. The scripture reading this morning will be taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. John, chapter 15, beginning with verse 1 and ending in verse 8. Hear God's word. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You've already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. And just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. 
Such branches are gathered, thrown into a fire and burned. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh, precious Lord, thank you for this moment that we have to proclaim and hear your word. Uh, thank you, O oh Lord, for uh, this uh, virtual means of being able to broadcast your word that it may fall on fertile ground. Lord, I pray that you will speak to the preacher, speak through the preacher, allow only your word to go forth. Because when your word goes forth, it does not return to you void. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. So again, over the last few weeks, uh, we have uh, endeavored to share in a sermonic moment under the theme of being rooted. And uh, Of course, the first week, uh, we established uh, the necessity of being rooted in God's word. And how the being rooted in God's word indeed is uh, what provides nutrients <clears throat> for our lives. Secondly, we explored this, the importance of growth and uh, how you and I are, to, are expected to grow uh, based on uh, being receptive to God's word. That you and I should not uh, remain the same. Uh, we should not be stagnant. And today's theme will be that of pruning. And the, the, the initial position that I believe that God's leading me over the last couple few weeks is, is for you and I to uh, embrace this reality in the midst of COVID-19 and uh, political unrest. Do we allow COVID-19 to uh, cause us to uh, shrivel up in our faith? Or do we grow and, and stand firmly planted in our faith because we are rooted and grounded in God's word. I contend on this morning as I have contended over the last few weeks that uh, the follower of Jesus, the, the disciple of Jesus in, in, in the midst of COVID-19, in the midst of this political unrest, this uh, the uh, unhealthy vibe in this world, the hatred and the racism, the brutality that's being exhibited across our country. The disciple of Jesus is one who remains rooted and grounded in God's word, which will allow them to be, as the psalmist declared in Psalm 1, like a tree firmly planted by the river where one will not wither. That's what I believe is the task of the disciple of Jesus in the time of today. So we are to be rooted in God's word. If we are rooted, that's it. That will provide our nutrients. And that will allow us to grow in the midst of a, a, a pandemic. That will allow us to keep growing because the world demands still uh, the disciple of Jesus to spread the message of hope, not the message of despair. To continue to be ones who demonstrate love and not hate. The world demands today for the disciple of Jesus to be one who's the bearer of good news and not bad news. So for you and I to uh, be that disciple, this process also demands pruning. And for the next few moments, what I would like to share is about five principles of pruning. Pruning that is necessary for the disciple of Jesus to grow. In the 15th chapter of, of the Gospel of John, uh, records one of uh, the I am sayings of Jesus that uh, John presents in his Gospel. Chapter 15, or in chapter 15, Jesus declares that he is the true vine. I wonder if John, as writing this 
story, this account of the good news of Jesus, that he recorded a time where Jesus was perhaps walking with his disciples, continuing to teach, more importantly, continue to, continuing to unveil and disclose his true nature to them and the nature of the kingdom of God, and more importantly, their responsibility to allow the kingdom to be experienced here on earth as it is in heaven. In doing so, Jesus declares that he is the true vine. That there, that in the sense that Jesus declares that he is uh, a connection, a means by which one can have access eternally to the Father. But more importantly, what I contend is that the story also shares with us not only the identity of Jesus, but the responsibility of the disciples, those who are followers of Jesus. And at the very first piece of this text is a reminder that the disciple of Jesus is one that abides in Jesus. That's perhaps what we're talking about in the weeks past when we're talking about being rooted in God's word and growing in God's word. This particular text continues that idea as a reminder to the disciple of Jesus that you and I cannot live apart from the vine. That, that if we are going to be followers of Jesus, that we must abide in Jesus. For the text declares, abiding in Jesus, that's how we produce fruit. You see, my friends, at the end of the day, as we've explored over the last few weeks, the real task of the disciple is to be fruit-producing, fruit-bearing individuals who, and that fruit is to be a reflection of Christ-like behavior. If you and I are not reflecting Christ-like behavior, we are not bearing fruit and we are not living out our call as disciples. And quite frankly, that quite often will mean, or can be, it can be assumed, that that is attributed to you and I not abiding in Jesus. So the text declares that you and I are going to be subjected to the process of pruning. Again, what I contend is that this process of uh, pruning, that you and I consider at least five things quickly. One, what I contend on this morning is that pruning exposes the true source of your fruit bearing ability. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm glad that you're asked. Pruning exposes the true source of your fruit bearing ability. The question for us in this first piece is are you and I rooted in God's word or are we rooted in something else? Here's the key, the, the, the constant here is that if you are rooted in the world, then that is where you are, uh, where you will grow and that the end result will be worldly results. That means the fruit of your growth will be worldly. So you will not exhibit the fruit of the Spirit, but instead you will exhibit the antithesis of the fruit of the Spirit. Instead of love, you will live out hate. Instead of peace, you will live in and live out chaos and disturbance. You ever experienced or ever been around people that just love to stir up stuff that are not peacemakers, but instead like to just stir things up? It's not the fruit of the Spirit, and that's not the result or the evidence of one that is rooted and grounded in God's Word. And so the pruning process, that is the process that, uh, that, that, breaks away at the branch, the process that strips away at the branch to identify the source of the growth and to pull back more. This pruning process will expose the true source of your growing or your fruit bearing ability. That pruning process will expose your roots. It will expose that which you are rooted. 
And this morning, you're going to ask yourself, the fruit of, this, of my life, am I rooted in God's word or am I rooted in the things of this world? This pruning process will expose the true source of your fruit-bearing ability. Secondly, the, pr the pruning process is, is more concerned with internal health and growth than external appearance. Oh my goodness. That is, or that means, my sister and brother, that, that God, the pruning process is more concerned about the health of the branch, what's going on on the inside of the branch. And that pruning process doesn't look good. It doesn't feel good. And at the end of the process, it leaves that branch uh, stripped. It leaves that branch looking externally bare. I, I remember, uh, that didn't happen this year, but in previous years here at the St. Paul Church, where the United Methodist men would engage on that first weekend of February, they would take on the landscape of both the church and the parsonage. And they will begin the fruit, uh, the pr pruning process of, of shaving down and and and, and uh, cutting off branches and 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 making sure that the branches on all these trees and and all of these rose bushes they are all in in good condition. And the end of it all, you would see at the end of this process, all of these trees uh, looking feathered. And it is because that they have made preparations for new growth. And my friend, the pruning process would not leave you looking very well. The pruning process doesn't feel well. The pruning process doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't make you uh, or allow you to have the best appearance. However, the pruning process is more concerned with the internal health of the branch and not the external appearance. And my friends, sometimes you and I, uh, as disciples of Jesus, we're more concerned or more focused with the outward appearance or, or having the right words or, or the things that are, are, how things are presented. And my friends, in the pruning process, God wants to know or wants to identify whether or not you are healthy on the inside, whether your soul is healthy, whether you are experiencing and, and feeling and living out the nutrients that are coming from the root of God's word in your life. The pruning process is not frivolous. The pruning process doesn't deal in the superficial or the surface. The pruning process gets to the internal parts of the branch to ensure that the best comes out of it. Thirdly, this pruning process, one, is it exposes the true source of your fruit bearing ability. Two, it is concerned with internal health and growth and not external appearance. Three, this prune, pr pruning process is designed to result in fruit bearing and not destruction. As I just mentioned, that quite often after the pruning has taken place, uh, it, 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 looks, it looks pretty bad. It doesn't look the same. Sometimes we think that a, a tree or sometimes we think that a, a vine is healthy because it has a whole lot of outward growth. But quite often that outward growth isn't healthy or it doesn't come from a healthy place. Good Lord. And, and so, my friends, this process of pruning is designed not to make uh, you appear to uh, be destroyed. Destroy. It is not to destroy you. The pruning process is difficult. The pruning process is hurtful. The pruning process strips away things that quite often you and I like. The pruning process will quite often leave us bare and destitute or feeling as though we are bare and destitute. We don't understand the pruning process. We don't understand what God is doing in our lives in the pruning process. And I stopped by this morning just to remind you, sister and brother, that the pruning process is not to leave you destitute. The pruning process is not designed to destroy you. The pruning process is not designed to make you feel or to keep you in a spirit or a state of lack. Instead, the pruning process is designed to equip you so that you bear fruit, so that you can be 
become and develop into the woman and the man that God called you to be, that we can live out this call of fruitful discipleship. I know it doesn't feel good. I know it doesn't look good. I know that the out outlook looks bleak, but God is still working. The Bible says that the good work that God is doing, God will keep on doing it. And sometimes that looks like pruning, but God will keep on doing it until the coming of Jesus Christ. That is that God will keep pruning us until we become more like Christ because the objective of the pruning process is to bear fruit, not for us to feel like we are destroyed. Fourth, I contend this morning that the pruning process will release you from the dead weight that's accompanied by living. I'm inspired by this pruning process because although it does not quite often feel good, I also recognize that in this pruning process, the result is the removal of the things that are in our lives that will not allow us to grow. And, 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 and God is in the business, my friends, of growth and fruit bearing, fruit producing. God wants you to produce fruit. God wants you to produce fruit that will uh, look like or be evidence that you are indeed God's disciple. And this pruning process sometimes will release you from dead weight. Some of you are listening and you are involved in certain situations and circumstances that are uh, not beneficial to your Christian journey. The pruning process will release you from the dead weight that will not allow you uh, to fulfill and live out your calling in Christ. Without uh, the, the Greek word that's translated into uh, the English, you know, the uh, pruning uh, is kathar. It is uh, closely related to the English word. Uh, that uh, speaks to cleansing and uh, uh, even catharsis. So I, in, in this understanding of uh, this pruning process or this removal uh, process or the trimming process as the Common English Bible uh, translates it, 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 in a sense, it is a reminder to us or an instruction to us that God is in the business of stripping away things that simply will not result in our growth and will release us from it. That's the good news, that you are in something that is crippling you from growing. The pruning process, my sister and brother, is designed to release you from it. That dead weight uh, and that very well, that sin, uh, leaving out those things behind and keep allowing you to press toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And last, my friends, uh, that this pruning process is, it exposes the true source of your fruit-bearing ability. Are you rooted in the word of God? Or are you rooted in something else? Are you remaining, abiding in Christ? Or are you abiding outside of Christ? The, fruit, the, prune, the pruning process is more concerned with internal health and growth instead of external appearance. God is in the business of ensuring that your soul is healthy. And God is not deal, does not deal with the superficial and surface. Pruning is designed to result in fruit bearing and not destruction. Don't think for one moment that God is in the business of keeping you unhealthy or wanting you to be unhealthy or bare. The bareness or, or what being removed is only for the purpose of your growth. It's for your good. The Bible says all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord are called according to his purpose. The fifth Excuse me, fourth is that uh, pruning will release you from the dead weight that's accompanied by living. Last, God does the pruning. This really should have been the first point of the first position. That is that God does the pruning. In this text, the, the vineyard or the vine dresser is, is God. That God does the dressing. God does the pruning. And why this is important for you and I to consider my sister and my brother is two things. One, that you and I are quite often engaged in the fruitless and frivolous practice of self-help. 
And that is we want to improve ourselves by ourselves on our, we, we want to do it all on our own. And we're trying to do the work of the vine dresser when we are the branch, Lord have mercy. We're trying to do God's work. We're trying to do, and that's why we keep thought coming back, right back to the same square one. That's why we keep falling short. That's why we keep falling by the wayside because we're trying to do the work that God is designed to do. And we, God has designed us to trust God to do the pruning in our lives. God does the pruning, not you. And so while for you who are trying to uh, make, to do things as best as you can, for you who are trying to work things out on your own, oh, that's a noble idea, but it's a farce to the faith. When God has given us the mandate to trust him, to trust God, to lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge God and God will direct our path. My sister and my brother, I have to stop by in this process of, to, of being rooted and grounded in God's word that if you are going to grow in God that you got to stay in the word of God be rooted in God's word and your growth is dependent upon how you are rooted and in which you are rooted and that hopefully you are rooted in God's word and the pruning process is a necessity in your fruit bearing life and that pruning process does not feel good but the pruning process is a necessity so that you and I can respond to the ways of this world in a healthy way, in a way that will represent our faith in God. Right now, right now, with, with the uncertainties of tomorrow, right now, with sickness all around us, right now, while people are in the street fighting for liberties that, where, that we should not have to fight, right now, while a pandemic is running rampant and literally changing not only the landscape, but the function of our lives, the Bible is making clear to us that we still have a responsibility as disciples to not only grow, but to bear fruit. And our root will allow us to be the tree planted by the rivers that will not be moved. Let the storms come. But you who are planted and rooted in God, you can find security and safety in Him. Oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. You are my strength and my Redeemer. My sister and my brother, I hope that you were blessed by the worship experience on this morning. I pray that you were able to take away some practical applications so that we all can uh, remain firmly rooted in God's word, that we can uh, plant ourselves uh, in a way that will produce growth, and that in this growth process, my friends, that we will engage in the process of pruning to rid ourselves or to allow God to rid us of those ish issues and habits and sins that prevent our growth. God desires that we grow, and that is my prayer for you. Well, service is over, and now the work begins. My sleeves are rolled up, and this week is truly a week of service. I want to invite you on this morning uh, to a couple of things. One, I want to invite you to a time of giving. Uh, we are most like God when we give. The Bible says the Lord God loved the world so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The greatest gift of giving came from God. We are most like God when we do the same. So I invite you to a time of responding to the goodness of God in our lives by generously giving unto the Lord. You have uh, on the screen ways in which you can bless the Lord with your gifts, your tithes, and your offerings. You can mail in your gifts to P.O. Box 1694, uh, Meridian, Mississippi, 39302. 
Also, we have available for you online giving, which is secure, safe, and convenient for you to give your gifts, tithes, and offerings or to a specific ministry. Which brings me to where I'm hit, where I am currently. I am uh, downstairs in what we call the Mitchell Room slash Pastor Work Room slash uh, Lounge Room now slash um, Community Closet. Uh, this is where we are preparing to have our clothes made available uh, for our online Community Closet where uh, you have an opportunity uh, to log on to our website, which is stpaulstelizabeth.today slash shop. Our online community closet is our endeavor to you know, offer Christian services in the midst of a pandemic. Most of our community closets and uh, have been closed because of the pandemic in an effort to honor the social distancing, it, it prevents persons from uh, being able to walk around safely. And so we decided to do, by the grace of God, is to offer these services online. When you log on, you select up to seven articles of clothing, and uh, these are free. And then the Thursday and Friday of the week of your selection, uh, you will come to St. Paul United Methodist Church, 2713th Street in Meridian, and we'll have contactless delivery. That is, you drive up, you provide us with your name and order number that you were given, and then your package will be placed in your car, and then you can return home. Uh, and again, it's our effort to be a blessing to the community in the midst of this pandemic. Friends, I also want to invite you to our, uh, worship, our virtual Bible study, which takes place every Wednesday at 6 p.m. as we conclude uh, the study in the book of Romans, which has been a blessing. And on Friday nights at 8 p.m., we have our virtual uh, prayer online. That is when the community of faith comes together and we pray, uh, we intercede on behalf of our family, friends, but also the community and the world. Uh, we love you here at the St. Paul, St. Elizabeth Faith Community. We're so grateful for this privilege to worship with you. And until we meet again, we'll